Good afternoon, ladies and gents, and boys and girls. Well, this uh, today we are going to go through the first two questions of this paper that we've done on Friday. It's October, November 20, 20, uh, well, 2002 paper, so it's quite an old one. And like I said, it's a paper four. The paper fours have a two hour, 30 minute um, time frame, and it counts out of 130 marks. Good. So let's jump in and start with question one. Um, let me read the question at you. At an athletics meeting, Ben's time for the 10,000 meter race was 33 minutes exactly. He finished at 15.17. Now the first question is, at what time did, he, did, did the race start? Good, so we're going to start with the finish. Let me just get another cookie. So 15, 17, he ran 33 minutes and I've got to do sub subtraction and if I do that I will get 14 hours and 44 minutes. So he started off at 14.44 and that's the end of that question. Okay, good, let's start with the next one. They ask, what was Ben's average speed for the race? Okay, so what was his speed for the race? Um, giving, you, giving your answer as kilometers per hour. Okay, so we've got to do a little bit of conversion here. His time, let's just write down what speed. If we look at speed, we know that speed times time equals distance. Okay, his speed. The speed is what we want to find, so speed would be distance divided by time. Okay, his distance is 10,000 meters. That is the same thing as 10 kilometers. Okay, going to use that one. And then his time was 33 minutes, but we want it in terms of hours. So 33 minutes is the same thing as 0 0.55 now how do i know that you just tap that into your calculator press the sd key and it will give you 0 0.55 good now let's substitute it in so speed equals 10 kilometers over 0 0.55 hours so speed would be uh, let me quickly check it um 18.2 kilometers per hour okay Good, let's go on to the next question. Um, the next question is, the winner finished 51.2 51 seconds ahead of Ben. Okay, so that was dotted three. And he finished 51.2 seconds ahead of Ben. Uh, how long did the winner take to run the 10,000 met uh, 10, meters? So how long? Okay, for the 10,000 meters. We know that Ben took 33 minutes. So if I subtract 51.2 seconds from it, I will get the right answer. So on your calculator, tap in on your screen, 0 hours, 33 minutes, minus 0 hours, 0 minutes, 51.2 seconds sorry okay that would give us an answer of let me quickly do it 52 52 minutes 8.8 .8 seconds okay or on your calculator screen it will look like that zero hours 52 minutes 8.8 .8 seconds Okay, good. Let's continue with the next one. Question B. Let me just use that bottom part of the paper. Okay. The winning distance for the javelin competition was 80 meters. Oh, wow, that's a good throw. Okay. Um, Artist's throw was 95% of the winning distance. Uh, calculate the distance of Arthur's throw. Okay, so let's start off with what we know. The winner. 
he threw 80 meters. And to win that, that was 100% of the throw. Okay. Now, R2 is 95%. So we need only that bit. 95%. And we want to know what is his distance. Okay. So I've got that silly little rhyme that we have percentage of a number equals another number. Percentage is for 95% of a number. My number is always the original number. And it's 80 meters equals that other number. And we can work it out what is the other number. It would be 76 meters. Okay, let me continue. Okay, I've started on that question, but we used a little bit more paper than I anticipated. Okay, um, let's do Cal Pamela. It's question C. Pamela won the long jump competition with a jump of 6.16 meters. This was 10% further than Mona's jump. How far did Mona jump? This was 10% further than Mona. Okay, so let's start off with um, a little box. We want the original in the box, so Mona would be in the box. Mona jumped 100% of her distance. Okay, but then Pamela, with her little long legs, came and she jumped a further extra 10%. So Pamela's would be 110%. Okay, and that we know is 6.16 meters. So my silly little rhyme, percentage of a number equals another number. Percent, the number is always the original one that's in the box. So 110% of Mona would be um, 6.16 meters. And then if we solve it, M is 6.16 over 110%. And M, the result of that, would give us 5.6 meters. Okay, and that concludes question one. Let's quickly have a look at question two. There's a little bit to do here. I've already done the little sketch there. And now listen carefully. The diagram shows the sketch of a net. Okay, so that thing, it, that means it is um, like a box that's been unfolded and it's cut open um, to give the outline of what it would be of a net of a solid um, triangular prism the right angle a uh, triangle ABC is its base so this is the base and this is quite important information so good the next bit is AC AC is 8 BC is 6 AB is 10 centimeters, FC, um, FC is 5, and CE is also 5. Okay, show that, so question 1, I, um, show that BE equals the square root of 61 centimeters. So BE, that's the one that we want to find, that little one there, okay. So I've got a triangle, it's a 90 degree triangle, that was also one of the givens. That means that we can use the Fargram theorem. So I have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, we have 6 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. And C would be the square root of 61 centimeter squared. Oh, not centimeter squared, centimeters. Sorry guys. Okay. The next question, let me get a piece of paper to cover that. So let's fill that in. Square root 61. Okay. Now write down the length of DB. DB. Well, think about it. You have a net. This, one, this little piece will fold up. It will join here. E and F will join. That one will fold up. 
and this would be like the little top lid. So this side, DB, will fit exactly on BE. So I can say therefore DB equals BE plus DB, the length of it would be square root 61. And that one was dotted two. Okay. Now they ask us, explain why DA is the square root of um, 98. DA, explain why this one is the square root of 98. Now think about it again. If this part, DB, fits exactly onto BE, then AB would fit exactly onto AF. And this is another 90 degree triangle. And we can again use Pythagorean theorem to solve there. Okay, so I know that A, sorry, AF, um, to obtain AF, we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We have 8 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. And C would be the square root of 89. Okay, so this one is the square root of 89 and because AF AF is equal uh, to DA of AD these two would be equal in um, in distance okay good let's continue there let me just get another sheet to cover here okay good so the, the next one is B calculate the size of angle um, D, B, A. D, B, A. We want the size of that angle. Um, we know that this one would also be square root 61. Okay, we've got a triangle. We've got three sides of a triangle. So I can use, what can I use there to, uh, to calculate it? I can use the cosine rule. Okay, because I, I don't have an angle. But I've got the free side, so I can use the cosine rule. So A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. This A is the one that we want to find. So the opposite side from A would be square root 98. B is um, any one of those other sides, so we can just do the square root 61. C would be 10 squared minus 2B square root 61, 10 cosine of A. Okay, good. Now we can continue there and just do that. That will cancel out the square root and the square will cancel out. So 89 equals 61 plus 100 minus um, 20 square root 61 cosine A. I subtract this on both sides, so I will have negative 672 equals negative 20 square root 61 cosine A. Divide by negative 20 square root 61 on both sides. That should give me cosine A equals 0 0.4609. I keep that number in my calculator. Okay. Then we say cosine inverse of 0 0.4609, all the numbers equals A, and if I tap that into my calculator, I get 62.6 degrees, 62.55, 62.55, and if I round it up, it would be 62.6 degrees, and that is my answer. Okay. So this little buddy there is 62.6 degrees. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. Let's continue with this question. It's, um, we are, we've done B. Now we've got C. Calculate the area of triangle D, B, A. Triangle D, B, A. A. We want the area of that triangle. So we know the area of any triangle is a half BC sine of A. So half B can be square root 61. C can be 10. 
sine of 62.6 degrees and I tap that into my calculator just as it is and let me quickly do that um, 34.67 if I round it off to one decimal place it would give me 34.7 or three significant figures that's a better choice to do okay let me work it up a little bit okay good let's continue so now they ask us for d find the total surface area of a solid okay so the solid and uh, the total surface area is the surface area of that one that one that one and that one okay so we already have triangle dba um we had that as 34.7 plus half base times height my base is eight my height is six plus a half my base is five my height is six plus a half my base is eight my height is five and i can plug that into the calculator and i can obtain the answer if we do that 93.7 centimeters squared because it is a solid and it is the surface area so surface area is all the areas if you add it up okay last little bit and then we are done paper there okay calculate the volume of a solid of a solid of a triangular prism that would give us a third times the area of the base times the perpendicular height okay so we know that the area of a base is this abc because they've given it up to us so a third area of a base is a whole base that would be eight times the height that was six times the perpendicular height and this prism will be five centimeters tall okay I tap that into my calculator and I get 40 centimeters cubed. It's volume, so my answer should be in terms of cubes. Good. Ladies and gents, that's all for, tonight, for today, for the first two questions. In another YouTube, we will do the next two. Thank you and enjoy. Bye.